Hello! Welcome to this disorganized series of mine of um, the progress of making this cyberpunk Red Riding Hood render. Now, today I shall teach you on how to take commissions and get commissions and recognize which people are gonna pay you and which ones are not. So, the first thing you need to know is that there are two types of commissions. There are personal ones and commercial ones. Now, the commercial ones are all the kinds of commissions. They are usually the ones that have more budget because they're usually a little indie studio that wants to get maybe a character modeled or concepted for a game or something that they're gonna sell later on. So because it's for commercial reasons, you always should charge a bit more because they're gonna make money off that. And probably more than you got paid <laughs> at first, but that's how things work. The other kinds of commissions is the personal ones. Now, these ones, in my experience, are pretty rare. Um, they're usually just some person who has an OC or a character or a VTuber that they just want to get a drawing or an illustration of. And they're usually very simple and you can charge it a bit cheaply because those people might not have that much money unless they are making much money, like if they have a big following. So, yeah. Now, one way is uh, you need to know which clients are gonna pay and which ones are don't. There are many that will not pay but here are some red flags to avoid for you people so the first one is any mention of roblox or minecraft <laughs> i mean i'm sure some w will pay yes but usually those are just kids that don't even have a bank account and they they don't even know how to spend money so yeah i i recommend avoiding things that have a big demographic of children like roblox or minecraft another thing is they're usually not gonna know too much like they're gonna be very clueless on what they want so, if they don't know what they want, you can either try to understand what they need and help them understand what are they gonna get. But even if you do, usually those commissions don't go more further than just talking because the client just gets confused and doesn't know what they want at all. Which kind of sucks, but hey, that's how things are. Another red flag to avoid is um, really bad English grammar. Not typos, because everybody makes typos. I make too many typos, and I'm ashamed of that. But if they have really horrible grammar, they're either gonna be someone that's trying to commission you through Google Translate, which is perfectly fine, or they're just gonna be another kid who doesn't know what to do so yeah i avoided those as well now one way to make sure you will get paid is to always take money up front or the 50 up front and then 50 um right before they get the files so now, the reason you want to get the money up front is to confirm that they have any money or that they can pay. Because 
Usually, if they're not willing to pay up front, they either don't have the money or don't want to spend it or don't have access to such things as PayPal because they're underage. So, now you might think that like, oh, if I ask for money up front, that might discourage the client from commissioning and they might think I'm a scammer. Well, one way to not look like a scammer is to have a portfolio that shows that yeah i can do the stuff you're asking me to here's proof all the commissions of the past and personal work but back to the subject some clients might not completely trust you and that's where the great deal of 50 percent up front and 50 after the project is done comes in because that way you get some money up front to do the thing so you can confirm that they can pay and that they're willing to spend the money and yeah but um, usually this thing might be a bit hard to do because if you're doing illustration they can just you know like pay you 50% but like you send them a PNG of the progress and they're like well, um, okay, I'll just I'll just leave now. Even though the like it's complicated if you're doing 2D. But if you're doing something that requires actual files like 3D meshes, then that is actually pretty good. Or I guess PSD files would count as well. So yeah. Now, back to the portfolio thing and not looking like a scammer. Now, having a good, nice portfolio is gonna really give you clients. I mean, you don't even need the quality of it to be that high. You kind of need quantity, too. So, anything that you can post that is good enough or, like, just decent, like, it can even be medium quality level. As long as you can post it, and share it on a site like ArtStation or something, you absolutely should. Because the more works and variety of works you have, the more likely the client is to find something nice in the portfolio that would fit their project. So, yeah, but I get it. Um, some people build their portfolio by purely commissions, which is a tragic idea because some of them very likely are gonna be under NDA that you will not be able to share only like five years from now. So I really recommend you do some personal works that you enjoy, that's something in your style for your portfolio, like fan out some characters that you really like or just just draw something nice for yourself and post that as well on your portfolio like you do on social media and that way you're gonna have a big huge portfolio with both commission work and personal work all mixed in so the client can see how you can make things right and one last thing, don't take commissions that are too much out of your comfort zone. Because if you try to take a commission of like mecha robot modeling where you can't even model a car, you're probably gonna fail and it's probably not gonna go well and everybody's gonna be disappointed and just be be careful with the difficulty of work that you take is make sure that you'll be able to do it and luckily you'll be able to push yourself just a tiny bit out of your comfort zone to improve a bit more those are usually the tips i have and the strategies i use so yeah to recap what you need is to build a proper portfolio i re highly recommend using artstation for that because it's so easy to just send your client a link to your artstation page and actually don't send it to the artstation site that's i hate when people do that because 
It doesn't have all the works there. You should always be able to show as much works as possible. So you just send them to your ArtStation account, like ArtStation slash name. Not, not the site, please. I hate when people do that. So, yeah. Have a portfolio. Make sure to take payments up front to confirm that they can pay. And avoid clients that are not serious about getting things. And that way you will avoid all the issues. Well, not all the issues. There are. There's always some people that are rude and just horrible. But that should basically make you avoid most issues. And always, always discuss the price as early on as you can. Like, as soon as you find everything out about the project, you should start discussing the price. Because... Once they're like, oh no, this price is too high, well then, that's usually the point where you can negotiate for a bit lower price if you can afford that as a freelancer, or you can just go find some other clients, because you need more money to pay your rent. And those are the tips on freelance I have. And another thing is, for the next... Speed paint, I will not have voiceover on because I don't get enough questions and it's really hard to come up with ideas on what to talk about. So yeah, this will be the last one in this series with a voiceover. So I'll just be posting nice little speed paints with nice little music. So yeah, you may enjoy that and this one as well. So yeah, have a nice day.